Warning, there is a good chance Bitcoin Mike has no idea what he's talking about. Do your own research. Enjoy the show. Thank you. All right, all right. Let's see what's going on today, folks, in the markets. We're seeing a little bit of dumpage today. And um, two reasons. One, they got uh, the Chinese protest. You know, China has this no COVID policy, which is crazy. Um, almost kind of sounds like the Democrats. If the Democrats got their way, that's what would be happening um, over here. But um, you know, they locked everybody down, and they locked everybody down in China, so they have no herd immunity. And now, every time there's a little bit of a COVID infection, they lock everybody down. They actually, there's video of them sealing the doors to apartment buildings so people can't get out. Anyway, people are protesting. People are sick of it. This could be the end of the of the Xi Jinping in China. I think people are basically fed up and rising up against them. So we'll see what happens. That's knocking the market. Also, BlockFi uh, filed for bankruptcy, which, you know, we knew this was going to happen. I, the one thing that's weird, and I really am trying to figure out human psychology, the whole thing with markets is human psychology. We knew, we knew BlockFi was going under six months ago. Um, you know, <laughs> once Celsius went under and Voyager, you know, BlockFi was next. They were basically looking for funding. They were looking to be bailed out by um, FTX. I mean, there was no guarantee that was even going to happen. Um, I don't know how anybody kept their money in BlockFi. If you kept your money in BlockFi any time after the Celsius dump, you, you deserve to lose everything. That's my opinion because you're just a total idiot. But they have filed for bankruptcy, which everybody knew they would, would and I guess that crashed the market a little bit. But um, yeah, I mean, it's almost like a di- – like people like it – we knew this, folks. It's almost like a doctor telling you you have two weeks to live, and then when the person dies, it's like, oh wow, that was shocking. And like, no, no, we knew it. We knew we knew we knew BlockFi was going under. That was it. BlockFi was done. It was part of the FTX contagion. It was actually part of the Terra Luna contagion. Um, and FTX basically gave them some false hope. So anyway, so BlockFi is done. So we're seeing some weakness in the markets. Uh, the big story there, <laughs> you know, I was talking about this the other day. Bitboy, Bitboy, Bitboy is. Uh, we went. To, he went to the Bahamas. Um, to basically try to track down Sam Bakeman Fried and basically just har- harass security guards. Um, you know, I've been saying for a long time, you know, guys like BitBoy, they eventually lose it all. And I'm wondering if this is how BitBoy loses it all. Um, I'm going to play a crypto banter clip. While crypto banter is sleazy as well, um, he's basically try- in, in a way trying to help BitBoy by telling him, hey, look, it's one thing to sue a guy like a, a Tozy and you have a little bit of money so you can bully people around a little bit. But now you're starting to bully around guys like, you know, guys who are like Kevin O'Leary who have billions of dollars and have a reputation to uphold. There's this big Twitter war with um with uh, BitBoy and Kevin O'Leary and everybody. And it's just like, what are you doing, man? Like, d- Kevin O'Leary sues you. You're done. Yeah, we get it. You have, you have a couple million dollars, BitBoy, and Kevin O'Leary has billions and a reputation. So he would squash you like a bug. So it's completely crazy what BitBoy is doing, especially when the Bahamas government has already come out. You know, folks, things take time in life, you know, especially when it comes to financial crimes. I know a lot of people are upset that Sam Bakeman fried hasn't been arrested like right off the spot, but nobody was investigating Sam Bakeman fried before the collapse. So now the investigation has to ensue. You don't just arrest somebody. You have to build evidence. I've been an investigator for 20 years. I do a lot of workman's comp cases. Just workman's comp cases take years. So I can only imagine a case like this. So anyway, F- FTX uh, current under um, civil and criminal investigations, according to the, the Bahamas AG. So they, he did a whole press conference. They're, they basically have, we, all, we already know the Bahamas um, SEC has basically seized all the money from, um, from Sam Bakeman Freed, at least whatever was left on FTX, and they've basically shut down the exchange and they're investigating. That's all they can do right now, folks. So we just have to wait a couple months and see what happens. You know, BitBoy running around the Bahamas, while it's entertaining, and I like it, I'm glad he's doing it because it's fun, it's not going to accomplish anything. In fact, it'll probably just get him sued and arrested and maybe even banned from the Bahamas. But uh, I think crypto banter, Rand kind of said at best. Now, Rand's basically, <laughs> you know, all these scammers kind of stick together, and um, Rand makes some very good points because not only is BitBoy now against um, FTX, uh, Sam Bankman fried and Kevin O'Leary, he's also attacking Gary Ginsler. Now, don't forget, folks, Gary Ginsler is the head of the SEC, and BitBoy was promoting unregistered securities like the PAM token and all those scams for the last couple years on his YouTube channel, and now he's going after Gary Ginsler. So... All Gary Ginsler has to do is snap his fingers 
and they go, oh, you promoted all these scams? You're done, fucker. You're done. So BitBoy has no common sense. He's reckless. You can look at his past with the substance abuse and all that. Great, great, great. Everybody has their problems. But a lot of those people get into major, major problems because they, right now, BitBoy is addicted to the attention. He's addicted to the attention that he's getting for doing all this. Just like he was addicted to other things before years ago that got him into trouble. Well, now he's addicted to something else that's going to get him into trouble. He's messing around with billionaires and governments and he's going after the SEC. I mean, it's almost like if I was a bank robber and I was robbing all these banks and I decided to pick a fight with the FBI versus just high, like the FBI, you know, they decided they're not really going after me. You know, I've kind of slipped under the radar and I get bored one day. So I just start harassing the FBI. Well, I think they might then start going after me for all those banks that I robbed or at least start investigating me. Like I said, folks, all Gary Gensler has to do is start investigating BitBoy. We all know the PAMP token. We all know the money he took for promoting all those scam projects over the last couple years. It's not going to end too good if Gary Gensler goes after BitBoy and Kevin O'Leary starts suing BitBoy for defamation. I mean, BitBoy essentially made a video a couple weeks ago calling Kevin O'Leary a murderer. I mean, it's crazy at this point. So anyway, let's hear what Rand has to say here. To the attention. And I'm just worried for Ben that it's not going to end well. I hope it does, but I'm really worried that it's not going to end well. Because he seems to be picking fights with a whole lot of people. Great. You picked a fight with SBF and it worked. Congratulations. I think that's really, really, really amazing. You did a great service to industry. You went to Bahamas. Um, you got a whole lot of views, you got a whole lot of clicks, you got a whole lot of attention, but you didn't actually meet SPF. And I think it was a great PR stunt. I think well done to Ben. But this is where I'm starting to feel a little bit uncomfortable. This is where I'm starting to feel a little bit, a little bit uncomfortable. So he's taking on the Solana blockchain. He's, his view is that the Solana blockchain keeps getting, kept getting paused because it was an attack. It wasn't an attack from the outside. It was an attack by SPF to be able to, to, to launder funds. He said, Every time this line of blockchain paused, it was actually Alameda research laundering money and brute forcing transactions. There are others out there. There are others out there receipts. And if you know, if you think about it, knowing what we know now, does this surprise anyone if you and Solana run for the hills? But then Anatoly Yakovenko, who's the founder of Solana, says if this attack was possible, the attacker would be able to do the same thing every 10 minutes with Bitcoin blocks. And so technologically, this is not possible. So he's picking a fight with the Solana community. Then he's picking a fight with Mr. Wonderful. Now, bear in mind that, you know, Mr. Wonderful, I'm not going to comment as to whether he's right or wrong or Ben's allegations about him are right or wrong. But what I am going to comment about is that he's a very, very, very powerful guy. And he's got a very, very, very strong and very valuable reputation as a result of, of years and years and years of building his reputation. And what Ben is doing now, he's attacking Mr. Wonderful. Now, Ben may be right, but he also may be ahead of himself and he may be wrong. I don't know. I'm just worried that if he carries on like this, he's going to get, he's going to have an accident. He's going to get sued. He's going to pick with the wrong guy, fight with the wrong guy. And I'm all for, really, I'm all for, um, I'm all for protecting the industry. I'm all for being vocal. But I do think, I'm just worried about my friend Ben. And I'm just worried that he may be getting ahead of himself. I hope not. I hope he's right. Um, I'd love to see what what's what happens, how this plays out. But I mean, he's he's now he's accusing Mr. Wonderful of murder, even though you know there was a, there was this whole thing about Mr. Wonderful and a boat accident that killed two people. And now that's what I was saying. He's basically accusing a billionaire of murder. Now I actually looked into this story where. I mean, it's actually a sad story, and BitBoy keeps bringing it up. I'm sure Kevin O'Leary isn't happy about it. I mean, it's it's basically like he, like if you run somebody over with your car and it was an accident. Basically, Kevin O'Leary and his wife were in a boat late at night. Another guy was in a smaller boat, and the guy in a smaller boat didn't have any of his lights on. So Kevin O'Leary, his boat, basically ran over to this little boat that didn't have any lights on and ended up killing two people on that boat. It was all investigated, no charges were filed, and it turned out the other boat was at fault because they had no lights on, nobody was charged with DUI or anything like that, and BitBoys keeps bringing it up, like, oh, you murdered these guys, oh, and you were drunk. Like, 
completely false allegations, even if they were true, they've already been investigated by that government and no charges were filed. So all, ca all Mr. Wonderful Kevin O'Leary has to do now is basically file multiple lawsuits, uh, def defamation suits against BitBoy, and BitBoy is wiped out. Yeah, BitBoy has m a few million dollars probably from promoting all the scams over the last couple of years, but um, Kevin O'Leary would just squash BitBoy like a freaking ant. So yeah, folks, while all this is very entertaining that BitBoy is doing, I made a video like six months ago saying that BitBoy will eventually unravel himself and end up broke. This could be how it happens, by picking on the wrong people. And again, I'm, I'm only going on what the court, what happened in, in court, but in court, they said that he, it wasn't murder because he hadn't been drinking and his wife was actually driving the boat. He said he was drinking afterwards to calm his nerves when this all happened. And Ben is now accusing Mr. Wonderful of murder. Now, falsely ac accusing Mr. Wonderful or somebody of murder in the public uh, domain, someone with a big reputation is a big problem because that you can get sued for. And so anyway, that's just basically the gist of what's going on. And I just think, wow, you know, at this point, Bit, Bit, if you look at BitBoy right now and all of his like his Bahama rants, he's going, he's absolutely basically unhinged at this point. He's basically just saying whatever comes to mind. He's throwing out allegations on Twitter. He's throwing out allegations here. He's getting in flights with security at the Bahamas. I mean, there's a problem. And if people can't see it, that's fine. Highly entertaining. But I think this could be what unravels Bit, BitBoy. Um, his thirst for the attention, the addiction of getting this attention right now could land him multiple, multiple serious lawsuits from multi-billionaires who won't stop until BitBoy has, is bankrupt and destitute. So anyway, that's the, <laughs> the BitBoy news. Like I said, I love it. I hope it continues. But um, I think he's really playing with fire right here. And like I said, the Bahamas Attorney General AG and Minister of Legal Affairs, Ryan Pinder, has confirmed that the collapse of crypto exchange FTX is the focus of an active ongoing investigation. Look, folks, you got to be patient. I know it sucks. I know it sucks, but you got to be patient. They are investigating it. And also, Sam Bakeman fried is scheduled to testify uh, in front of Congress, I believe in two weeks. So you just got to be patient. Going to the Bahamas, yelling and screaming, while well, is totally entertaining. And I love that BitBoy is doing it. And I would never try to stop him from doing it because it's fun. Um, the common sense in me, the investigator in me, um, the rational person who I am would say that is one way to get yourself sued into fucking oblivion. All right, let's see what else is going on, folks. Where I talked about the BlockFi. Yep, no, nothing new there. <clears throat> I want to end on some Cardano news. You know, Cardano's you know pretty much been hanging out at thirty cents for a while, but the Cardano network has reported an impressive ninety percent jump in daily active addresses. Cardano founder Charles Hoskinson confirmed the news by quoting a tweet twisted by ADA focused handled adverse news. According to the report, the number of delegated wallets on the blockchain rose to one point two. So, folks, think long term with crypto and with Cardano. Is your favorite crypto? Um, currently developing, putting out news in this bear market, and are they gaining inactive users like Cardano is? Cardano will, will, will be $5, $10 by 2024, 2025. Ignore the FUD and look for cheap prices. <clears throat> Bitcoin, eh, I think we're probably going to go under 16000 today, but I could be wrong. There's a lot of bad news and the stock market is down and we have the China situation. I am looking for my 25 cent Cardano like I have been for the last eight months, and maybe I'll get it today. Litecoin's also uh, down to $72. I won't be buying Litecoin unless it goes down to like in the 50s. I feel like I missed the boat. You know, I just have, I've, I just missed the boat on stocking up on Litecoin. And that's pretty much it, folks. Everything's pretty much hanging out. We got all coins down today, and uh, Bitcoin's down as well. So, folks, like and subscribe. Have a good day.